Google has just dropped some exciting news in the AI space this week. First of which is that Bard is now Gemini and they've launched their new AI model, Gemini Ultra 1.0, which according to Google, outperforms ChatGPT's GPT-4. And this raises an interesting question. After a year of GPT-4's dominance, is this finally a model that surpasses it? For those of us immersed in the AI and digital content creation world, this could literally be a game changer for us. In this video, I'm sharing everything you need to know about the new Gemini Ultra, and we'll take a deep dive comparing Gemini Ultra with GPT-4 to see if Google's latest innovation is actually worth making the switch for. Gemini Ultra is Google's newly released, most advanced AI model that is available with their new paid plan, Gemini Advanced. At the same time, they're also rebranding their Bard AI model into Gemini. But on the free plan, you're only getting access to the pro version of Gemini, which isn't as powerful as their new Ultra 1.0 model. So you can already start chatting with Gemini using the pro model, but if you wanna get access to the high powered Gemini Ultra model, you're gonna to have to sign up for Gemini Advanced. Now, Gemini Advanced is a new package that gives you access to Ultra 1.0. Google claims that Gemini Ultra is far more capable at highly complex tasks like coding, logical reasoning, and following nuanced instructions, and it allows you to have longer, more detailed conversations. Which brings us to the pricing. So Gemini Ultra is part of the Google One AI Premium Plan, which is priced at $19.99 a month with a two month free trial. I really like that there's a free trial of this. ChatGPT does not offer that. You just have to pay straight out of the gate if you wanted access to GPT-4, but otherwise it's basically the same price as the paid version of ChatGPT. But in addition to access to the Gemini Ultra model, you also get added benefits like two terabytes of storage and future integrations with Gmail, Google Docs, and I assume the rest of the Google suite. So price-wise, it's pretty even. Is it worth making the switch if you've already been paying for ChatGPT+. Let's do some testing and comparisons between the two to see if it's worth it. So in this first test, I've used the prompt I normally use to help me generate new YouTube title ideas. This helps me create really good titles that I know have a good chance of garnering attention and getting the click and getting the view on YouTube. So this I've used quite extensively with ChatGPT and this is an example of the output that it spits out for a video on the topic of how to use Dolly 3 in ChatGPT to create compelling images. So I look at these examples here and they're pretty good. You know, I would probably take a few of these, workshop them a little bit and pick one and go on to use that with a video. So I've preloaded the prompt with all the best practices that I know as a YouTuber to spit out good titles. And this has followed that beautifully. There's lots of good examples here. So let's see how Gemini does in comparison. So I use the exact same prompt with Gemini and this is what it spits out. So I look at these titles Okay, like these are very comparable and there's several in here that I could potentially use. What I do like that Gemini has done here is it's also given me a reason why each of these titles is a good title. So for the first one, it says that it directly addresses the topic. It hints at insider level knowledge. The second example here that it combines tool popularity and promises ease of use. The third one is action oriented with a clear problem solution structure. So I don't know if it's going to do that consistently, but it is a nice little added touch that gives me some added context on why these titles would be good for me to use for a YouTube video. So for this test, Gemini performs similarly to ChatGPT. I can't say one or the other is particularly better than the other. They would both do the job. Gemini also gave me a list of some additional tips. So giving me some tips on combining this with a thumbnail, experimenting with A-B testing and using keywords, which are all really good pieces of advice when it comes to creating content for YouTube. So that is spot on. Again, it wasn't what I asked for, but it is helpful. And that is one of the things I've been hearing about Gemini early on is that it has a more helpful personality than ChatGPT, which sometimes it's very useful like it is here and other times it can be kind of annoying. But in this case, it's done a really good job and I would definitely use this for generating YouTube video title ideas. Using the right AI model is only half the battle. The other half is being able to craft really effective prompts so you get actually useful writing in the output. This is especially true if you're a content creator using AI to help you generate better and more content. But if you wanna learn how to craft your own AI prompts that perform better than 98% of other AI users, then you can grab my free AI prompts cheat sheet down at the link in the description below. This is packed with all sorts of tips and tricks that's gonna help you craft better prompts for 
ChatGPT or Gemini Ultra. Since I wanna get a good idea of how Gemini performs for people that wanna use it to create content, the second test that I ran it through was for a prompt to generate long form social media content such as Twitter threads. Now this one is set up specifically for a Twitter thread on crafting magic prompts for ChatGPT. So this is a long prompt, it's full of lots of examples, but I've been testing this prompt out for my business and this is what the output is in ChatGPT. We have it following my instructions pretty well. It's structured, broken down into little bite-sized pieces that is perfect for a Twitter thread. So we have the bolded headlines that are catchy and attention grabbing, a short and sweet hook, and then catchy headlines for each subtweet and short and sweet little snippets of value. So I scroll down and it's done a pretty good job. This formatting is really good. I don't have to do very much editing in order to have this ready to go and post on Twitter or X as it is these days. And after the value, it goes and wraps everything up with a summary. And as part of my prompt, I instructed it to include a CTA at the end. So that is this section here where it has chosen to prompt my followers to share this thread. I've tested this prompt pretty extensively and I know it works well with ChatGPT. I'm quite happy with that. That's gonna be very useful for me in my creator business. So let's see how Gemini does with the same prompt. So I've used the exact same prompt and pasted that into Gemini and this is what it spits out. So we have our Twitter thread, we have a hook, which looks good to me on first glance, and then followed by the body, which is broken down into sections. So that would probably be one tweet there, the second here, the third here. So it has, again, the bolded headlines, uses lots of white space and quick little, very easily digestible bullet points for the value. And then it ends everything up with a CTA, just like ChatGPT did. So this one has chosen to prompt my followers to share their best prompt experiments below by leaving a comment. So it does a good job. My thoughts in general, the performance is pretty similar again to GPT-4. I would say I prefer the output in ChatGPT just a little bit in this example. It isn't by a huge margin. Um, both of these could definitely be used. Um, in both cases, I would take these and edit them a little bit myself just to get it exactly how I want before I would post these, but either way, it's pretty good. But a slight edge, I think, to ChatGPT on this specific example. Again, this might not be the same if you run it again with a different topic or a different tweet, but I can definitely see a situation situation where in another example, my preferences might be reversed. I ran through a couple of different examples of this on my own. And in general, Gemini's tweet threads were a bit shorter, but the structure was good and it followed the examples that I gave it in my prompt. Going forward, I would probably use both of these models, to be honest. I would use the same prompt, run it through both, and then see which version I liked better. I would expect sometimes ChatGPT to output better content and other times Gemini would. The third test I wanted to run to compare ChatGPT4 with Gemini Ultra was for image generation. So I prompted them both to generate a couple different types of images just to see how they stood up to one another. So first I did this prompt here for create four variations of the following image, a wide shot of a settler on Mars looking out from the habitat across the green terraformed Martian landscape, Unreal Engine style. So this is ChatGPT's output and immediately I noticed it only output one image when I instructed it to do four. So it took a bit of extra prompting to give me the other images. It was only wanting to do one at a time. Now, I don't know if this is a temporary bug or this is a change with the model, because just a month or two ago, I was having no problem generating multiple images at once. But these are the outputs that it came up with. So comparing that with the same prompt with Gemini, it did a better job in generating four images, but I do think the quality is not quite as good. So this is what it gave me. They both created images that are quite obviously in that typical AI generated style. You're probably not gonna mistake it for actual photos anytime soon, but that is just on first test. I also wanted to see if it was able to change the formatting of the images. So ChatGPT spit out landscape formatted images and I wanted to see if it could change that to portrait mode and it went and did that. Obviously they're not the same image, which is kind of how these models work, um, but it is tried to keep the same vibe of each image when turning it into a portrait style image. 
but it followed the directions good and it output what I asked. I had a little more trouble with Gemini. I don't know if I need to do more testing, but I tried to get it to output the same images, but in portrait mode. And it was just continuing to give me different variations of square images. So I'm not sure if that is not a feature yet, or if it's just finicky at this point. That's about as far as I got with that example. For a second example, I wanted to see how well it handled text. So I asked both models to generate me a logo for a new course that I'm creating. So I'm creating a course called AI Creator Engine. Can you make me a logo? I want it to be simple and sleek and using current design trends. And ChatGPT's first effort, the logo design is all right, but the text is messed up. So I followed it up with some more prompts to generate me four more logo ideas for this product and the text was better. I'm still not a huge fan of the logo, but at least it's in the ballpark of what I'm asking for. It looks, they look like potential logo designs. I wasn't quite happy with those. So I asked it to generate four more interesting and creative logo designs. And this is what it created. So maybe not exactly what I'm going for, but I could spend a bit of time back and forth with it to get more specific in what I actually want in the logo to get to where I want to go. But the text is good. Other than the first example, they all worked out very well. I asked Gemini to do the same thing. And so first of all, it just gave me concepts for the logos, but then I asked it to actually generate the images. So again, not super impressed with these. Some of these I wouldn't consider logos necessarily. So I asked it to generate some more and it gave me these kind of odd images that aren't definitely aren't logos in my opinion. So I did a bit more prompting and asked it to make me three logos with the title of the course in it specifically, and it did a better job. So, okay, we have AI creator engine. That one's not actually bad. AI creator engine. I'm not sure what this is. Um, I think it's aiming for ACE for the acronym of the course and asked it to elaborate on the first version because I like that one the best. So this one is all right. Um, I don't know what this is. That is not a logo. And that one's all right as well. Overall, Gemini is needing a bit more help um, with the images. ChatGPT seems to be much better at getting to what you asked for sooner. Whereas Gemini did struggle a bit to parse what I was asking for and to generate images based on that. Gemini required a lot more handholding and went off track creating images I wouldn't consider to be logos but it did create some decent text-based logo designs when I got after it some more. Overall, to be honest, I much prefer mid-journey image generation. Here's the mid-journey output for a similar prompt to the Mars landscape we were generating. It's just much better at creating more artsy styles with better design, and that just might be down to my personal preference as a former artist, but it is a model dedicated specifically for images. If I had to use them, GPT-4 and Gemini do a decent job with images, but they honestly don't hold a candle to mid-journey in my opinion. I would definitely prefer to use mid-journey for image generation most of the time. Okay, camera died, so we're over to the webcam. So the conclusion, is it worth switching from ChatGPT to Gemini Ultra? And based on the test we just went through, I think Gemini Ultra shows a lot of promise and both models have their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Gemini can do images of similar quality to GPT-4, but they both kind of get beat out by Midjourney. But for text, they're both really, really good. And I was very impressed that Gemini actually held its own against GPT-4 because over the last year, GPT-4 has outperformed everything else, even when others were claiming that their model was gonna be the ChatGPT killer and it never was true. So I don't think Gemini is the ChatGPT killer, but it is for the first time a model that does hold its own against GPT-4, which is a really good thing competition wise. It is obviously better to have more than one company with a horse in the race. So we don't have open AI with all of the power and with the only model that's better than everything else. So I'm really excited that there are two competitors now in the space that are front running. But back to our test, Gemini creates short form and long form content of a similar quality as we got out of ChatGPT. And honestly, if you are picking between the two, I honestly can't pick a clear winner. So it's down to whichever one you feel you'd prefer to work with. Um, I'm personally gonna move ahead testing them both out a bit more over the next few months. I do have that free trial for two more months with Gemini. So of course I'm gonna play around and do more experimenting and see if it does eventually emerge the front runner. But for now, ChatGPT4 and Gemini Ultra are both really, really good models and you really can't go wrong with either of them. But I'm curious to know if you've played with both of them, which one of them do you prefer? 
if you have a preference at all. If you do, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. GPT-4 and Gemini are both really, really good at helping you write better than you could on your own. Watch this video next to learn 10 AI prompts that'll help you become a better writer, to learn tips that'll help you improve your writing with your AI model of choice. And I'll see you over in that video.